Good morning. It was good to see so many out this morning. Um, I am Sheila Cook, and I am running for re-election to the Missouri, uh, Marshall City Council Board One. I was born in Marshall, and I've lived in this area the entire my entire life. Um, I graduated from Marshall High School, and I uh, got a, a, a associate's degree in business at the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg. I married Mark Cook, and we had two children, and uh, they went to the Marshall Public Schools and also graduated from Marshall High School. I, uh, <coughs> Mark and I started a lawn care business in 1985, and I continue to operate that today. And prior to that, I worked at a local attorney's office uh, for 15 years. Uh, to be qualified for the city council, I feel you need to be devoted to the city and the Marshall residents and what they want and to put the needs of the city above your own. You need to be able to work with others to achieve goals that are set before you. And um, I think working at an attorney's office, I have been, been given some abilities to read and understand proposals and contracts that are presented to us and we're required to act on. Um, having my own business, I have an investment in Marshall and the citizens of Marshall have been very good to my family and myself. I do believe it's good to have a diverse uh, cross-section of people on the council and I would like to continue adding a woman's perspective. Um, some of the um, things that have occurred while I have been on the council uh, we've, um, in fact, the Super Center and all the stores along Highway 65 to the west were built while I was serving on the council. Uh, we have obtained a minimum of $10 million in grant money to, from improvements for the city, uh, which have included extending the runways, uh, concreting the runways at the airport. Uh, the jet fuel farm was built and currently we're in the midst of remodeling the airport terminal building. There have been good relations with the John Fitzgibbon Hospital and we're very proud of the many improvements that they have accomplished over the years. Personally, I uh, feel the Cancer Center is a great asset and I wish it had been available when my family and I were dealing with cancer and making all those trips to Columbia, Missouri. Um, it, um, track what I'm saying here. Um, anyway, it, the forward thinking of the people that passed our sales tax this year has uh, enabled us to move forward with some of the projects that we have been put on hold because of lack of funds. Our growth of our city has been hindered by our tight budgets. And I am anxious and excited to have the opportunity now to move forward with those projects. Uh, finally, I look forward to improving the appearance of the town, work with others to encourage businesses to locate here, and to do whatever we need to improve the quality of life in Marshall. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hope you got your coffee this morning. We're starting off uh, early here. Well, thank you very much uh, for being here, Sheila. Uh, I liked what you said. Uh, now we just need to do it. We need to uh, have a vision for our city. We need to have a plan, goals, and then we need to attack them and get them done. Uh, Sheila mentioned Fitzgibbon Hospital, which obviously I have a little history with. Uh, back in 1987, when I started with the organization, uh, we were didn't have a lot of plans and vision. And so once we got our vision and then developed a plan, a lot of people said, you can't do it. There's no way. It just won't happen. But you know, with hard work and dedication by a lot of people. Look what's setting out there on 65 South. And that's what I want to do and the Moving Marshall Forward Committee wants to do. 
the city has done a lot of very positive things, and I give them a lot of credit, and they're all good people. But we need, we need maybe some new leadership, some vision to get things done. And that's the reason I came out of retirement to do this. I have friends that told me I really need to have a psych evaluation <laughs> because I just got out of the skillet into the fire. Well, I feel very dedicated in serving our community to try to make it a better place for us to live and to work, draw younger people to our community. If we don't get our younger people to stay, come back home after they go off to school, uh, new people moving in, which we do, we have some new young people moving in, but not enough. We, you know, for us to look back 50 years from now and see what Marshall looks like, we've got to do a lot of work between now and, and then. And that's, that's really the bottom line is, we just want to work hard, meet the people's needs as, as much as possible. There's so much work to do to clean up the community. We have a lot of decaying buildings with homes and, and old businesses. We can do that. Don't let anyone tell you we can't do it and give you excuses for why we can't. We can and we will. Uh, if we're elected to uh, work with the city and with the community. Um, so, my only request I have of you this morning is get out and vote on April 5th. Make your voices heard and we will do everything we can to help make this a better place for us to live and work, raise our families. Thank you. You know, I was a dentist and I did better one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm pretty nervous here today, so bear with me. I've got my credit notes. Hopefully I can read my writing. No, that dentist and writing. Um, thanks to everybody for organizing this today. I appreciate that, and I hope everybody else does. I see a lot of familiar faces out there, which is kind of nice because I moved here in 1989. You know, most people move to a town and have kids. We moved to a town and brought our parents here because we loved it so much. Brought my mother here uh, and then we brought my in-laws here and they're very happy here and we're very happy here. I've lived all around the country. I've lived in Albuquerque, Salt Lake City, around Washington, D.C. I've lived in Columbia, Missouri. And this is the place I want to be and this is where I'm going to stay. And i put a lot of work into it. Um, one thing about running against a group, you're going to get outspent. So I'm not going to try and put yard signs out. I'm not going to try and, and do a lot of campaigning that way. I'm going to go door to door and have this little green thing with me and we'll leave it on your door. Please take time to read it. If you haven't made it in your mind yet, it takes about 15 seconds. And uh, if you see me on the street, give me a call or, or talk to me. Uh, my phone numbers are listed on the uh, website for, for Marshall uh, City Council. You can go there. I've also got my email there. Anytime you want to talk to me or write me, I'm available. Have been all the time. Uh, one of the, when I first came to town, I thought it was important to get involved. I, I've been involved in several things. I've been on the Butterfield Youth Services Board. I've been the vice president there. I've been involved with San Jose Trail Days, Marshall Kiwanis. I've uh, been a planning and zoning committee member. I, I've been a deacon and a treasurer of the First Christian Church. Happy to do all those things. And that's how you get to know people, especially if you're not born and raised here. And I, and I know thousands of people here and I'm happy to do so. And uh, God bless Marshall. I love it. Um, one other thing, um, city councilman is a pretty easy job, really. I mean, what you do is you, you find out what problems are in the community, your people talk to you, and you try to find a solution for them. And the way you do that is you go and work with the people, whether they're department heads, city uh, manager, city attorney, uh, other council people, and you try to facilitate an agreement or to get something taken care of. You can't take care of all barking dogs, you can't take care of all yards with weeds if you don't know where the owners are. You can't do that by yourself. You've got to have a support group and you've got to know how to work with it. And I think I'm good at that. Um, one of the things we are dealing with right now is, is a, a, a deal that I'm working with. The council doesn't always agree. And sometimes city, city business is bigger than the council person. We have had a lot of closed sessions lately. I've been against closed sessions, so I want to have sessions open. 
and um, we're dealing with a problem here in Marshall that could impact Marshall for the next 20 or 30 years. And so I would really ask that we have our next council meeting, March 21st at 5 o'clock. I'd like to see as many, or 5 15, I'd like to see as many people in Marshall come and ask to uh, have the council discuss this uh, issue with them because this issue is going to take place and we're going to have to vote on it next month or so. And the people of Marshall don't know what we're talking about because everything's been closed. I've always been for open meetings. I've always been for including the people of Marshall. I'm going to continue to be that way when it's within the law. Um, April 5th is our voting date. I'd appreciate your vote. You won't see any yard signs, but the way I look at it, the people who don't have yard signs are the ones that are voting for me. Um, because there's plenty of yard signs out there, and you can get one real easily if you choose not to. I've got to think you're voting for me. I hope that's the case anyway. Hope to see you on April 5th. Good luck to everybody. God bless Marshall and you. Thank you. Um, I have 8,000 yard signs in my car, so if anybody needs one, uh, just to make sure. My name is Kirk Aaron. Uh, for uh, those who do not know me, I'm running for uh, City Council on Ward 2. Um, the last, um, where I've been is Central Methodist University. I've graduated the County Degree Central Methodist University. From there, I've spent the last 18 years in the tech industry, the last 12 years running the business side of a small software company. I think those two attributes lend well to running for city council and helping the city council. I'm not a politician, so I'm going to give some examples of exactly what I would do. I wouldn't talk in general terms. I do agree with Vince that uh, things need to be more transparent, and I think I can help that. What do you mean by that? Uh, you know, getting stuff online. We need to be able to push everything online so we have the ability to, in your on your phone, right, which is really a computer that makes phone calls at your fingertip and have the ability to just to look at the city council information, look at agendas, look at minutes, look at budgets. This is not too big for the city of Marshall, and I'll give you a couple examples of that. Um, I'm going to start my timer, so I hope you're there. Uh, uh, a couple examples of that. If you look at Boonville, you know, just uh, 25 minutes away, you can look at on their website, you can see the last three years of uh, budgets. You can look at uh, proposed, accepted, actual expenditures for last year. We don't have any of that. If we look at Moberly, they have the last two years trailing of expenditures and proposed information. We don't have any of that. They have a one-year and three-year plan of what's happening with the city council and what the city plans to do. Uh, we don't have any of that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we have a half-cent sales tax that we just uh, voted in, and that's fantastic. I mean, depending on who you ask, it's Six hundred thousand and one point two million dollars. As far as my knowledge, I don't know what that is. You know, Vince just talked about we need to come to the meetings and talk about what's going to happen in Marshall. Let's put that information online so everybody knows when they come to the meeting. Right? If the agenda is online two, three days ahead of time, and there's something happening in my uh, my subdivision or on my street, you bet I'm going to come to that meeting itself. So. Transparency can be as easy as just getting the information online with the tech industry. I can do that. I can help guide the city. Now, kudos to them once they found out that one of our pillars of our platform was to put information online, be more transparent. So they did that. That's great, and I appreciate them listening. Unfortunately, they're getting charged $55 a month for free service. They're charging $660 a year for something that should be free. <coughs> do I think they don't love Marshall? That's not right. They do. They absolutely do. They just don't know they don't know. All right, let me help guide them in the 21st century. Let me help guide them where we get information online at any given time, and it's at your fingertips, and you have the ability to come and ask the questions. Right? Once we have that information, you can come and ask those questions. Let's do that every first and third Mondays of the week. But I have a pet peeve there too. Why is it 5.15 p.m.? Right? Most people in the Marshall community are still getting home, having came home yet, and we have a meeting at 5.15 p.m., let's make it a more realistic time so you and the, uh, the people in this crowd and the people in the city can come and voice those concerns and issues. I'm not naive to believe that I'm the smartest guy in this room. Absolutely not. There's a lot of smart people. There's a lot of very successful people uh, that's running the business, and we need your help. We need your, your voice at these meetings to help guide us. And the only way we do that is to be able to get the information at your fingertips at any given time. You know, I can go on and on, on the tech side. You know, when the first thing a new company does is when they come and they Google Marshall, they're going to see a 1990s website, right? I, if they're paying $660 for 
of free service. I, I hate to even ask how much we're getting charged for a website. One minute left. She says. Uh, so, 515 meetings, that's a pet peeve of mine. If you show up late, you're going to miss it. Right? These things are at, lasting 8, 10, 15 minutes. That's embarrassing. All right? We need to be able to have conversation. You're telling me there's nothing in Marshall that we can have more conversation about. I'm not advocating three hour meetings. I'm advocating some conversation and some discussion. All right? And I appreciate Vince. I think you know, when I spoke to Vince, I think he's a good person. Unfortunately, I'm running against him. And I, we need to have conversation because the city of Marshall is too important to myself and my kids to continue to do the same old thing. The same old thing is just not good enough anymore. Right? The same old thing is not good enough. It's up to you. Time to change now. April 5th. I ask for your vote, Rudy's, Dan, and Ron. Thank you very much.